Yikes. Hmm. Dang it. Uh huh. Yep. Alright guys, today we are taking the test mule to the dyno. The goals are to test out the new camshafts which we just installed. Other changes that we made are we installed a much larger water to air intercooler and a billet wheel onto the turbocharger. Also, I hope we get to the point where the stock ignition coils will not make enough spark energy to light off the air fuel mixture. In other words, I want to turn up the boost. At that point, we will upgrade to our firepower race coils. Big thanks to them. And we will see how much power that we can make. So let's get on to the dyno. Alright guys, as you saw, that dyno session didn't really go as planned. We experienced a lot of issues with ignition breakup, and overall it was just a frustrating day. So, we've made a couple improvements to this engine. We're actually getting ready to start on our next session. And I wanted to go over what we did to try to mitigate the ignition breakup. So, when we put the smart coils on the engine, we kind of just laid them here and had short wires coming off of them. And, you know, it was kind of jerry-rigged and, you know, just not really optimal. Um, now, when you do this, if you have your spark plug wires close to your sensor wires, it could cause noise on those lines, which could cause confusion on the ECU, which could cause ignition breakup. I don't know if that's exactly what caused it, but as you can see here, I've made a very nice bracket that holds all of my nice firepower race coils. And I've also done as much work as I can to keep the high voltage spark plug wires away from the sensor wires. Also, we were running some NGK Iridium six heat range spark plugs on the car. Now on an LS, they typically say you need to upgrade your spark plugs to seven heat range around 
20 pounds of boost. We were running close to 30 pounds of boost and still running sixes. The problem with these engines is they have the long thread length on the spark plug, unlike the LS. It is about a quarter inch longer thread, so to get the proper spark plug for this engine is a little difficult. Luckily, they share the same spark plug as a EcoBoost and the newer LT Gen 5 motors. The problem is most of the people running performance applications in them are running Iridium plugs as well. I'm not a big fan of Iridium plugs because they're expensive and I, I just don't like that the electrode is so tiny at the top. It just seems like it's you know, asking for trouble. I'd much rather have a copper plug. And I found this guy. It is a copper spark plug with the eight heat range. It has the long thread and it is a racing competition NGK plug. So we just installed six of those in the engine. I'm hoping that will help solve the problem. Additionally, I contacted Jay at Real Street and Richard Holdner, and I just discussed what they thought may have been happening. You know, maybe get some of their recommendations on tuning. Uh, we will try to run the motor in Wasted Spark to eliminate the cam sensor as an issue because we were seeing issues with that throughout the day. And also, we will try to throw a little bit more ignition timing at it. Something that they mentioned was that as the piston is coming up, if you don't give it enough timing, the cylinder pressure may be too high for the ignition coils to light off the air fuel mixture. I would think with a smart coil, you would have enough energy to light off just about anything, but we were having spark break up regardless. If all else fails, we'll throw some dwell at it and see if that fixes it. So let's get onto the dyno. After this first pull, I was very encouraged. While the horsepower was a little bit lower than what I was expecting, there was no ignition breakup, which set the grounds for more horsepower. Now that we had clean ignition, it was time to start playing with the VVT. We did it! We met my goal. 800 wheel horsepower. But the other goal was to max out the turbo. And we hadn't done that yet. Now that we had the camshaft in a better position, we decided to throw some boost at it. You heard that right. That little turbo made 40 pounds of boost. We were having struggles with boost control throughout the day, so we decided to go back to the previous boost setting and try to throw a little bit of ignition timing at it. That made a lot of power. Unfortunately, it made enough power that it totally blew the tires off on the dyno. Obviously, the increase in horsepower didn't show in the power measurement, but that was obviously due to tire spin. After this pull, we made a change to the strap configuration, and we added some weight to the trunk, and we tried again.
824 horsepower was not the power gain that we were expecting to see. And this probably should have been an indication of what was about to happen. Also, if you guys noticed, it stalled on the coast down. This should have thrown pretty big red flags in our minds, but we wanted to max the turbo out. So we went for more boost. Look at that. Look at that. It's the connecting rod. Well, it looks like the rod bearing's okay. So I definitely don't think it was a rod bearing issue. Morning after pill's not gonna fix that problem. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> Go bang. Oof. Well, guys, I'm both happy and sad with our results from the dyno today. After thousands of hours and thousands of dollars spent on developing these engines and working on them on days like today where it's 16 degrees outside and we'd honestly rather be inside. It's finally paid off to something that I would call outstanding. My primary goal for taking this to the dyno again was to make over 800 horsepower. To put this in perspective, the numbers that we made would have been 1100 horsepower if it were an eight cylinder. That is some serious snot from a truck motor. I wanna spend the last couple minutes of this video just giving this motor a little bit of a send off. While this wasn't the first motor that we did, it has served as well. After faithfully serving for 175,000 miles in its original chassis, it survived a front end collision. Most would say that it had done enough but it was plucked from its grave for a special mission. After five pulls in the 300s of horsepower and one pull in the 400s of horsepower, it propelled this car, our 83 Fairmont, to break the stock bottom end 4200 quarter mile record and set it in the nines. Then it was pushed even harder, making nine pulls in the 500s of horsepower and one pool in the 600s. It lay dormant for a little while until it was brought out of retirement for one final mission. After making 13 pools in the 600s of horsepower, it made it through the valley of ignition breakup. And with the right spark plug at its side, its final destination was in sight. It made quick work of the 700s of horsepower, making six pools there, and its last hurrah was five more pulls in the 800s of horsepower. Because of your sacrifices, your brethren will hopefully live a slightly less stressful but longer life. You did good, soldier. You did good. With that, I want to also say thanks to everybody who helped out on this project. Big thanks to Snake Eater Performance, Firepower Race Coils, Monkey Fab Garage. Also thanks to Scott Fry, John and Jonathan Rose, Denny Craybill, of course my dad, my mom, and my brother. And a special thank you to Dustin of Dustin's Dino. Could not have done it without the help of so many people. Make sure you stay tuned for the autopsy video of this engine. Make sure you like and subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one.